What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got a comparison video for you. So today I'm going to be doing a comparison of all of my red hollow polishes and this is something I've been curious to do for a while because I feel like all of my red hollows are so different from each other so I thought it would be a really interesting video to share. So in my collection of 2000 plus nail polishes I only actually have 10 linear hollow polishes that I would consider to be red and then I also wanted to include some scattered hollow polishes that are full coverage that I think in the right light could look a little linear and that maybe people were curious to see compared to the linear hollows. So we've got 14 polishes to go over today. I'm going to be showing you a swatch of each one individually and then we can look at a comparison chart and see how they differ and honestly they're all very different. So this is part of a video series that I've been doing where I'm just comparing polishes that I would say are the same type of polish across different brands and it's been really fun so far. I have a little playlist of my comparisons so far if you want to see but I have done my black linear hollows my silver linear hollows I also compared all of my hollow toppers and I compared all of my cool toned purple creams which surprisingly I had a lot more cool toned purples than I have red linear hollows before we get started I do want to make a quick note about hollow polishes if you're not very familiar or well versed in them one thing to know is especially with linear hollow polishes they tend to look more holographic when they're fully dry so when I'm applying the polish it might look a little less holographic but I'm also going to be showing you what each polish looks like dry so you can see the full range of hollow. I am using direct lighting for all of my swatches and it's the same lighting for all of them. You will be able to see what each one looks like in regular direct lighting. I'm just using a couple of office lamps but of course you get the most hollow color when you are out in direct sunlight. And the last thing that I want to mention just in case you didn't know you can apply top coat over hollow polish and it should not affect the holographic pigment. You might notice while the top coat is wet that it might look a little bit less holographic but again once it dries it is going to be fully hollow. And I'll put a little mini list in the description if you are curious to see what my go-to top coat brands are but I'm also eventually going to be doing a video sharing all of my favorite base and top coats so stay tuned for that. So yeah let's just get started. All right so let's start off with Ice Cream Nails Hollow Attack. I wanted to start with this one because when I looked at my chart of all of the red hollows I own, I felt like this one looked to me like the most neutral red. So we've got very orangey toned reds and we've got very pinky toned reds. I would say this one sits pretty much right in the middle. It's super holographic. You can even see while the polish is wet it's got those lines of rainbow coming through. We have a slightly bigger particle in here so it catches the light really nicely and it's this really bright cherry red color. It feels like a very summery red but like I said it also feels like that primary red kind of color and it does show the full rainbow which you are going to see with some of the red hollows. Some of them don't show the whole Roy G. Biv rainbow. Some of them are in certain categories, but you don't get to see every single color. But this is one of the ones that does show every color. And I think having that silver hollow pigment in there lightens it up a little bit more as well. Really incredible formula on this, two coat coverage. And I think that Ice Cream Nails makes some of the best linear hollow polishes that I own, which is a pretty big statement, but it's true. I think they're really high quality. Next up, we've got one from Picture Polish. This is called Double Decker. I think they actually have more than one red linear hollow. But this is the only one that I own and this one I would honestly describe as a ketchup red. It's got a little bit of that orangey tone to it but it's also a little bit more muted so it has that sort of ketchupy brownish orange red color if that makes any sense. Now this one actually has an incredibly thin formula but it still gives me full opacity in two coats. Something to keep in mind is I do have short nails. So if you have really long nails, you'll probably need more coats than I use for my manicures in general. But I did find that this one after the two coats did give me a regular manicures opacity. Now this one I would say the holographic pigment is a little bit finer. So it is harder to tell unless you're in direct sunlight. But there are a couple of bigger little flecks in there that catch the light really nicely. And again, you do get that full range of rainbow, although it's not as intense as the ice cream nails one. 
Next up, we have one from OPI. This is called Paint the Tinsel Town Red. And this one, even though it is red in the name, I would almost describe this as a coral linear hollow. There's definitely that pinky orangey coloring to it. And this was a winter release, but it almost feels a little bit summery to me. This is actually what I'm wearing on my nails right now. I think this is a really great one. Mainstream nail polish brands tend to be a little bit worse with holographic polishes, but in terms of quality and how the formula applies, I think they tend to do a really consistent job. And OPI is just one of those. This actually happens to be a one coater and I am wearing one coat right now. It has a lot more subtle of a hollow sparkle in here. You do get the full rainbow, but it's easiest to see out in direct sunlight. And then there's also these little silver flecks in here. I don't think they're holographic, but they do add to the overall sparkle of the polish. So I think it makes it a little bit more sparkly, but a little bit more muted in terms of holographic coloring. Moving on, we have from Holo Taco Red Licorice, and this one is another super bright red shade. This one I would say has a little bit more of a pinky undertone to it, but it's still definitely red. And I think it looks a little bit more pinky because it's so packed with that silver hollow, which kind of lightens the base a tiny bit. But this one is super holographic. Again, it had a really amazing formula. It is one coat coverage on me as well. As you would expect from a brand that is called Hollow Taco, the hollow in it is very intense and very pretty. It seems at first glance to be a little bit finer, but I would actually say that this is one of the bigger hollow particles out of the polishes that I'm showing you today. So there's definitely a lot more of that sparkle factor as well. Next up, we have one from Cirque. This one is called Matter. And I have to say, this has actually been my go-to red hollow for a really long time. So it's interesting to see it compared with the others. This is definitely a deeper red shade. It does lean slightly cooler to me, but what's interesting is that this one actually has little flecks running throughout and I can never tell what color they are because when I'm applying them, they look like they're little red flecks, but looking at the bottle now, it looks like it's little gold flecks. And again, I don't think that they're holographic, so they do kind of warm up the polish a little bit, which is interesting considering it has a slightly cooler base, but this one is really rainbowy. It definitely doesn't look as rainbowy in this lighting as some of the others, but in the sunlight, this one is incredibly vibrant and you do get the full rainbow of color in there. This one is another two coater on me. Next up, we have a shade from Enchanted Polish. This is called Over the Rainbow. Now I do want to note Enchanted Polish is a brand that is no longer available, but if you have it, you're probably curious to know how it compares to some of these other brands. So I did want to include it anyway. This one is another slightly deeper red linear hollow. Definitely has the very full range of rainbow in here. It's super vibrant. The base color itself, again, I would almost describe as a little bit more ketchup-y. It's a little bit deeper and it has that almost orangey undertone to it. This is a formula that I absolutely love. It's very thin, but it also is very opaque. So this one is actually a one coater on me as well, which I just think is very impressive. Still searching for a formula that is similar to Enchanted. I would say the closest I've gotten is A England, which is another independent nail polish brand, but it's not exactly the same. Speaking of A England, I do want to show you this one, Lord Layton. I would actually say this one leans more pink than red, but it's very similar to some of these shades, so I did want to include it. It's almost like this warm berry color, but it's actually packed with a golden shimmer, which I think warms it up a lot more and makes it look more red. But still, if you're using this one on its own, you're probably going to see it as a pink over a red. So just something to keep in mind. I just wanted to have it for comparison's sake. And also because some of the colors that I'm going to show you tend to lean a little bit more pink, which I didn't notice until I had all of my reds out together. But yeah, another amazing formula, another one coater on me, a little bit thicker, but it's so easy to use. And because it's slightly thicker, it does feel like you have a full manicure on your nails. With some of the thinner formulas like Enchanted, even though I do get full coverage in one coat, I still like to have a second coat on because it just doesn't feel like enough on my nails. This one I would say does feel like enough. And I think that this is a very beginner friendly formula. It's just so smooth. You know what? Actually, now that I'm looking at this polish in this lighting, it kind of looks more like a scattered hollow to me than a linear hollow. So this one I might classify as a scattered hollow. You learn something new every day. <laughs> so now let's get into the deeper reds. We have one from Starly, which is called Norepinephrine. It's actually funny because I've always thought of this one as a deep red hollow, but looking at it next to the other colors, this looks pink. <laughs> this was actually 
actually in my original top 10 favorite reds video. So I'm still going to include it in the comparison again, just because I've always thought of it in my head as a red and I'm sure some of you have as well. So we'll just see how it compares to the others. This is another one with an incredible formula, another one coater. And again, it is thick enough that it feels like you have a full manicure on even when you just do the one coat. We do have a bigger hollow particle in here. So it definitely has a high sparkle factor, but it's not as intense. And one thing that I notice about this polish is that the hollow pigment in there tends to lean into the blue family. You can still see the full rainbow in certain lighting situations, but a lot of times it almost looks like there's this like green, blue, purple shimmer in there. So I think it's a really fascinating one. I think it's really gorgeous and I do love that berry tone to it. Next up, we have another shade from Ice Cream Nails. This one is called Bloodline and this one is a much deeper red than the first Ice Cream Nails polish I showed you, but I would still consider this to be a red hollow. It's more of like a blood red kind of color as the name would suggest. It's definitely on the vampy side. And again, it has that sort of orangey undertone that makes me think of ketchup a little bit, <laughs> like a glamorous ketchup, you know what I mean? But yeah, again, we have these really gorgeous full rainbow hollow pigments in there. You definitely get the full color throughout. Very sparkly because we have some slightly larger hollow particles in here. And again, just a really impressive formula, very easy to work with and very good payoff on the color. And then we have our darkest shade. This is Hollow Taco Crimson Void. Now, even though this one is called Crimson Void. I wouldn't actually fully classify this as a red polish, but I think Holo Taco is a very popular brand and I'm sure a lot of you again are curious to see how it compares to the others. So I did want to include it in my comparison. This one I would really call a maroon leaning into purple. It's a super stunning color. Again, that Holo Taco formula is really holographic. We've got those larger particles in there. So there's a lot of sparkle factor. You get the full range of rainbow in there. The formula is really nice and easy to work with. I get two coat coverage in this one and overall it's really pretty. But again, like I said, on its own, I wouldn't necessarily classify this as a red. It's definitely more in the maroon purple territory, but it's interesting to see how it compares with some of the others. So those are all of the linear hollow polishes I own. I also have a few scattered hollow polishes that are full coverage that I thought would be helpful for the comparison. I have a lot of red that are just glitter in a clear base that I would also classify as a scattered hollow, but I really wanted to focus on full coverage polishes with a red base today. So that's what I'm going to be showing you in this. The first shade we have is ILNP Say Love. As far as I'm aware, I always thought that ILNP had a linear hollow polish, but I guess this is their closest thing to a linear hollow. I could be wrong, so definitely let me know in the comments if I am. This one is absolutely packed, so it's a classic Classic red jelly base. And then we've got that scattered hollow, but then we also have what looks like a duochromy pink to gold fleck running throughout and it is just packed to the brim. So this is definitely an incredibly sparkly polish. If you want a lot of sparkle and you don't need it all to be fully holographic, I think this is a great shade. It's really beautiful. You do still get a lot of that rainbow sparkle in there, but there's just a little bit more depth to it. Then I've got two hollow jellies from Cirque. This first one is called Fire Opal and this is the warmer of the two. It has that sort of orangey undertone to it and it is a red jelly base that has a hollow fleck running throughout. It's super fine and tiny, but it's really packed in there. So you do get a lot on your nails and it's really beautiful. I love the irregularity of the flecks. I think there's a nice range in here. So some of them are a little bit bigger. Some of them are a little bit smaller and they all catch the light very differently. So I think it's a very interesting polish to have on. And I like that it's this very warm red color. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the shade Ruby. This is the same formula. We've got that red jelly base and then we've got these irregular silver hollow flecks running throughout. The shapes and sizes can really vary, but they're all very tiny and delicate. This one is definitely more on the pinky side. Rubies themselves tend to be a little bit more pinky than reddish, but still overall looks like a mostly red polish. And again, very sparkly, very faceted, if I may say. And if you're looking for a cooler version of Fire Opal, then this is 
is exactly that. And I really like having both because sometimes you're looking for a warm red and sometimes you're looking for a cool red. And then last but definitely not least, we have a shade from LA Colors. This one is called Ruby Glass and it is their Diamond Shine Finish, which is a hollow jelly. So we've got the red jelly base and then we've got the hollow glitter. This one is not a fleck. This one is a silver micro glitter in there. So they're all very regular. And we have this deep red, almost like orangey undertoned jelly base. Wow, I was not expecting this to be so sparkly compared to the others, but there is a lot of hollow in here, which is very impressive considering LA Colors is a drugstore or even dollar store brand. And I tend to associate the less expensive polishes with less holographic pigment, but LA Colors is definitely the outlier in that situation. I think they always really pack the hollow into their holographic polishes, especially the Diamond Crush collection was one of my favorite collections for any brand, not just for a dollar store brand. They were really incredible quality and I'm sure you can see here that the color is just wonderful. One thing about this one is with LA Colors, their brushes can be hit or miss and mine happens to be a bit wonky, but honestly it's worth it because it's a very inexpensive polish and it's a really gorgeous formula. So yeah, that is my Linear Hollow Red Polishes with a couple of scattered hollows thrown in there as well. And it's really interesting to see them all side by side in the comparison chart. Looking at them all together, some of them look so orange and some of them look so pink. And it's really cool to see how the undertone totally changes the color. But for the majority of these, if I just picked them up, I would say this is a red polish. <laughs> so it's just a lot of fun to see what every brand calls a red linear hollow and just see them side by side and see just how different they can all be. Because some of these, you can pair them next to each other and they will look like two completely different colors. So yeah, it was actually really fun to compare. I also found it really interesting that the LA Colors was the most holographic of my scattered hollows. So that was something new I learned. But yeah, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. Which out of all of the polishes that I shared today do you think is the most holographic and which would you say is your favorite personally? Definitely let me know in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy these comparison videos, please give it a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you have any other specific types of polishes that you'd like to see me compare across the board, also let me know in the comments because I definitely want to continue this series. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I have heard from a few of you that you are not seeing me in your subscription feed. So if that is happening to you, you can just click the little notification bell. There's actually a few options in there. So you can be notified for some videos or you could be notified for all videos. So if you want to pop that on, then you'll see me a little bit more often. And of course, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon, my Royal Astronomer, Amanda M, as well as my Cosmic Admirals, Rocketman's daughter, Paula, Ken, Rosie, and Courtney. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Pookie Bear, and Pookie Bear wants to know, what's your favorite fun thing to do in Vegas since you moved? Absolutely love the Las Vegas Strip. I'm sure in a few years I'm going to be so sick of it, but as of right now, I honestly can't see that happening because there's so much to do there. If you watch my vlog channel, which is my second YouTube channel where I'm like a little bit more of me outside of nail polish. I have been talking about this a lot because my partner Ryan and I have decided to do something a little fun, which is every weekend or every other weekend, we are going to the Vegas Strip and we are trying a new restaurant. I am very much a foodie. I don't know, should I classify myself as a foodie? I'm also a little picky because I don't eat dairy. Uh, So I guess I'm like a half foodie, I don't know. But I don't drink, I don't gamble, but I still think that the Strip has so much fun stuff to offer. And especially in the way of food. I think there's so many restaurants there that just aren't available anywhere else and I really want to make my way through them. So we've already tried a bunch. I have showed them on my vlog channel and I've given like little mini reviews of them, but I do have some reservations that I made a little while back for March and I'm very excited to try those places. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can definitely check it out on the vlog channel. But yeah, overall favorite thing to do in Vegas for fun is go to the strip, especially when it's a little bit warmer out. And it's also just really fun to to walk around. I like people watching. I like seeing what's going on. I love showing people the strip because I think just every hotel is so fascinating and different. But yeah, I don't know. I just love the strip. That's why I moved here because I think the strip is so fun. So yeah, that's it. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.